Well, let's start. Um, imagine that you are a CEO and you have to answer every phone call and every mail. Well, hard, isn't it? But if you were a CEO, you would have an assistant to answer those phone calls and those emails for you. And you would consider investing in this assistant worthwhile. Now imagine that you're a developer and that you have to open every ticket and update them, create pull requests, etc. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be great if you had an assistant? Well, would you consider worthwhile to develop it? I think it is worthwhile. We often consider that, um, sorry, we often consider that um, it's worthwhile to invest in our configuration management tool and that later on we get more time and more quality. But when it comes to our own job, we often have many boring tasks that we consider a necessary overhead and we just uh, apply them. But I think we should create our own tool to automate this too. And I did this and I created my own command line to automate all those boring tasks. Let me tell you a story. When I was at my first company, I had to develop an SVG parser. And it was complex and repetitive. As you may know, SVG is, repeats itself many times and at many different places and slightly differently. And I decided to create a generator instead of just a parser. And, well, my boss didn't like it because he thought it was too expensive to develop it. But at the first bug, I, I gained something because I didn't have to rewrite everything. I just had to change one thing and the bug was fixed everywhere in the parser. So it's useful to develop your own tools. I don't mean that you always have to create your tools, but when you cannot find one, you should write one. And many people say a bad workman blames his tool, but I prefer to say a good workman polishes his tools. And so you should choose the right tool for the right job. And if you have a specific job, and we all have a specific job, then we should develop a specific tool. So what is specific to our job? Well, each company has a different view of what quality is, of which, which tool we should use. We, should we use Redmine, Jira, GitHub, GitLab, anything else? So each company is specific. So each company has a different process and I want to automate this process for me. And why should we automate this process? Well, first, there's a lot of many boring tasks and you have them in mind when you do something, when you write code. You shouldn't. You, shouldn't, you should have your mind free for the main job you have, which is fixing bugs or writing new features. And you gain some time because you don't have to do all those small tasks. And if you automate this job, complex things can become simple. For example, for Rudder, we maintain many different versions of Rudder. And we often have to retarget fixes. And this can be complex if we have to follow the process of changing issues creating the fix again, and creating a new pull request. And it becomes simple when you use such a tool. And so you don't wonder how you do it, you just do it. When your, when your process is automated, it is also always followed. If you want to fix a typo, usually you either fix it and nobody cares, or you don't fix it because you have to follow the process and this process is much more complex than just fixing the typo. So having automating it makes sure that you always follow the process. 
Moreover, if your process is um, written, it's written as code, if it's automated, it's written as code, you can easily change it. And you can easily discuss, uh, talk about the change in the process via a pull request, for example. So it can evolve easily. And finally, if, you, if your process is automated, you can just tell newcomers to use the tool, and that's all. He doesn't have to learn many new things, new tools, and how to do things. But how much does it cost? You may think about this graph. You think it won't cost very much, and finally it costs a lot. But in reality, it doesn't cost so much. If you implement in one day just a single feature that is very small, then take less than one minute per person per day, and you may think it's not important. But if four person are using it for 200 years a day, it's one day one at the end of the year. So the cost is really minimum, almost zero. And you can multiply values or maybe automate tasks that, that are much more simpler. But if you are m more people in the company, it's still a gain to automate them. Because this is only the cost. It's not, um, you gain many more things than just time. <coughs> and for example, you can gain many less context switches. Do you know what a context switch is? Well, for example, let's say that you have a colleague that tells you, oh, this is a cute cat. What do you think about it? Do you like his necktie? Do you like, do you know if his necktie is around his, tie, his neck or is it just clipped? And many other things. And what was I saying? Um, yes, context switch. Context switch is how hard it is to come back to what you were doing before. And it takes time, it takes a lot of time to come back, especially if you are really focused on what you were doing. And you have many small, if you have many small tasks, then they come in front of you and you have many more context switches. So we should try to avoid them. Then how do you do this? Well, it's very easy because you all have already tools, many tools in your company, and they all have APIs, so you just use it. If they don't have APIs, you should drop them. The API trend has started more than 15 years ago, and every tool now has an API. And just call the API for the task you do the most every day, and you will gain only a few seconds. But the difficulty will not be to call the task. The difficulty will be to fill in the parameters for this task. You have to find them. You have maybe to go to a company database, to go to look for something to create a new database. That will be the difficult part of automating this. And once you've done, well, one source of uh, information you have is still the user. But you should ask him less information possible. And once you've done, just talk about it with your colleague. And you may think that it will be the right time to update the process. Maybe it's too complex. Maybe it's not precise enough. So it's the right time to change it. And if it's good, you can try it again next time and automate another task. And the next time, you will have already some code base and a task that was very, that seemed very hard to automate will be cheaper to automate now. So what did, I, what did I get? Well, I got a tool used by everyone at no mission. And they use it voluntarily. Which, is, which means it's a good tool. <coughs> and we could even ask, add a few tasks to the process without bothering anyone. For example, we added a new link to every pull request to, to link back to the ticket that lead to this pull request. And it makes life easier for the reviewer. 
and the person who, who makes a commit doesn't change anything for him. So what does it look like? Well, before we had many tasks. For example, open an issue, um, check that uh, no one else is working on it, check that it's on the right branch, and many checks, and create a branch, and now you can code. OK, you can work. Let's work. And again, many tasks. You add those files, commit with the right command, and push to your repo, etc., etc. And at the end of those tasks, you hope that the, you are done with the review, because you would have to do it all over again if it was not very good. Now it is replaced by this. Um, well, I've named my command rather dev. It's not a good name, but you may suggest a better one. And just, just have to pass an issue ID, and that's all. You're ready to code. There are nothing else to think. You still have to, to add files, because, well, I couldn't remove this. And just call another command, and that's all. You're happy to wait for the review process, because you could do it all over again. It's easy. This was the first part of my automation. But this command have many more options, subcommands. For example, I have a command that is the equivalent of git blame, and it does almost the same thing. But it also adds issue numbers to lines. So you can know where uh, a line comes from. And you have an option, which is very hard to find in git blame, to come back before a given issue. So you can come back much, you can uh, look in the history of this file easily. I also have a command that's called quick fix. Let's say you have a typo to fix, you're wandering in your source base, and it's already committed, it's clean, and you find just a typo. Well, it's easy, just fix it, and after you fix it, run rather dev quick fix. And it will open the ticket for you, fill in, create the pull request, create the commit with the diff corresponding to what you just done. And that's all, don't have anything else to do. Don't have to, to think about what and where to go. Another command is subtask. If you create an if you create a pull request and it got merged and you finally find that there was a bug within what you've done. Well, just run a subtask and it opens automatically a new ticket based on this one. And they are linked and they are, you are ready to code and fix your bug. You don't have to find back where it was, which issue it was, anything else. Just work on it. Another command that we use sometimes because it is very um, I say it, not easy to find what git command we had to, to run is revert. We can revert by just giving them an issue number and that's all. The command finds the matching commits and revert them and in every branch that we maintain. And it updates the, the issue, of course. <coughs> I'm often asked if this tool is open source. Well, it is. And it's available on GitHub. You can look at it. But as I said before, it's not easy to make it generic. Because every company has a different process, has different tools. So this is very specific to the company I work for. So maybe we could make it a framework, but it's not a tool that is to be used as is, except if you're working for automation or writing patches for this tool. And now that I have this tool, um, what do I want to do next? Well, I want to automate the review process too. Because currently, there are many small tasks 
small things, small remarks that we can do on many pull requests. For example, it's not on the right branch. You made a typo. There's a problem here. There are many small problems that take time because the reviewer has to come back and tell them. If it's a robot that can do it, you can have a quick feedback and fix it much more quicker and have a quick feedback loop. And now you know how my assistant looks like. It's, it has automated many things and does many things for me. I don't have to think anymore about what I need to do to work. But if you've looked properly, we've not automated everything. You have automated your configuration, your infrastructure. I've automated most of my job, but there still remain the coding part. As you know now, maybe m many big companies are creating an artificial intelligence and trying to make it good. And maybe one day it will be able to write code. Then you could put it here and you would just have to make the reviews. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be great if you just had to, be, to make reviews? No? <laughs> well, I think so. Thanks. <laughs> Any question? Okay, well, see you in uh, the Rudder stand and uh, have a good day. <laughs>